afternoon, actually. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> One of those days. We are here to go over our state ledge packet and uh, get some updates and also consider positions in a couple of bills. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Ms. Myhill, are you going to begin to walk us through the packet? Uh, sure, this is your state ledge uh, meeting, and Melanie will take over. <laughs> okay, Melanie, you can take Excellent. over then. Sure. I was trying sure, to like the give man of Melanie County some County time here. to, you know, get settled, Ms. Myhill. I'm like door number two. <laughs> um, so you have uh, the council packet in front of you. Just uh, we're on the kind of back 30 days of the legislative session, so um, crossover dates are coming. Uh, the operating budget will be out on the House floor next Monday night, followed by the capital budget a week later. So downhill slide going on here. So um, you've got just a short list of bills in front of you. The first piece of legislation involves, um, well, involves um, athletic fields and program open space and state funds. And what the bill does is it allows stateside capital POS, program open space <laughs> funds, um, specifically to be used for maintaining grass fields. It does the same um, when it comes to the local POS funds. It just writes in that statute. Um, then there's a section at the very end of the bill that specifies that state and locals for public projects must give a preference um, to natural surface materials on playgrounds and athletic fields. And then uh, a final um, section of the bill that um, basically says no state funds um, may be used basically from here on for renovations or for new playground or athletic fields um, for synthetic fields, for synthetic surfaces. And so that's the piece of legislation. County Executive supports this piece of legislation. Okay. Can we have Ms. Essie McGuire? Do you mind joining us? Because there were, there were just some questions about the position of the board. Can you tell us what is the position of the board or if there are any other conversations happening? <clears throat> Thank you. So, yes, the board, when the board took up this bill, the primary concern really was around the playground aspect of it. Certainly, um, alternative surfaces uh, on our playgrounds are very important to the school system, um, largely for accessibility issues. So that was really the, the um, primary focus of the board's concern. Also, I think the board, um, we uh, were certainly, the board is concerned about the um, pro prohibitions on spending um, funds for different portions of project and, and really the board as a whole supports um, the local jurisdiction's ability to um, maintain authority and control over those kinds of decisions at the local level and would prefer to work with the um, with our local uh, agencies and, and governing bodies around how to structure those kinds of projects. Um, so that's really sort of that was the other part of the board's um, position on this bill but the board um, really is more concerned about the playground aspects of it. And so did the board choose to support the bill with amendments or? Yes, thank you. The board's position was to support with amendments, really the amendments, again, focusing on having that um, element available for playground support um, with alternative sur surfaces. And then again, um, with uh, the ability to maintain uh, local control over the final outcome of projects. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Reamer. <clears throat> thank you. Well, I appreciate MCPS's desire to try to be responsive to what you hear from a variety of different quarters, but I think this bill would be a big mistake for us. You know, there, there, a few years ago, we passed a resolution that really the intent was to say no more tire crumb. And I think there's a lot of legitimate concerns about tire crumb as a fill for these fields. And as after we passed that resolution, we started to see the construction of fields that are made with other materials. We have cork, we have zeolite, we have other materials that don't involve something as problematic as tire crumb. Um, I thought at the time that that was going to address the concern, but instead what we've seen is a really unrelenting, uncompromising campaign to prevent the construction of any surface, with any surface that is not grass or dirt. And that just doesn't work in every location. And <clears throat> the idea that we couldn't 
get state funding for something that we need to do because that's the best solution for that location is problematic. Why would we want to have our projects ineligible for state funding when we determine that's the appropriate solution? Um, so I, I just think that, uh, you know, we've, we've taken the appropriate and responsible action to say the tire crime should not be a fill in these fields. And I think we should draw the line there and, you know, stick to that. So I, I don't support this. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Albert Nose. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I concur with Councilmember Reamer on this. I have some experience with synthetic turf fields, know a lot about them, and know a lot about the issues surrounding them, but also on general play services as well. While I do believe there are legitimate concerns with uh, synthetic surfaces, particularly how hot they get uh, in July and August, I do think that the pros outweigh the cons, and there have not yet been that I have seen conclusive, conclusive uh, medical analysis on there being uh, any sort of detrimental effects. Now, I know there is ongoing analysis, but I can tell you on the operation side, um, synthetic surfaces are critical to be able to carry out a reasonable baseline level of service for play, but also from an accessibility standpoint, particularly with our disability community as well, uh, which is rapidly growing here in the county. Uh, this past year, there was a record number of cancellations of leagues and games because of the rain that we had in the county. And while I do personally have a preference for grass fields, the practical reality is, is that some combination of both would put the county in an undeniably better position to be able to serve the needs of our growing community. And not being able to have kids or our residents be able to access these fields at all is not a solution either. Uh, and so I think the industry has come a long way in producing organic materials, which previous council I give a lot of credit to for stepping up and providing as a model nationally that other jurisdictions are now following, and I know this through the National Association of Counties. The resolution that our council took is a resolution that's being adopted across the country, and I think is a reasonable one. And at the North Potomac Community Center, as an example, we do have a synthetic surface there that is made entirely of organic materials, and has it is not as hot in the summer, and does allow for accessibility and play all, all year round, which I think is very important. So there is no perfect solution here, but entirely shutting the door on state resources I think is short-sighted, and I do think we as a local jurisdiction have the means and the expertise to make decisions on our own, and that is why I am opposed to this bill, and at a minimum uh, would urge my colleagues to consider not taking a position at all uh, if there is some opposition to that or contention. Thank you. Member Rice. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, we've spent a lot of time on this issue, uh, years, uh, talking about uh, the direction. And so I'm not going to reiterate the points that Councilmember Albernos made uh, because his were very well stated. I'll just uh, piggyback everything that he said, but then also uh, just state that even the board's position in terms of supporting with amendments, I mean, Ms. McGuire, quite honestly, your amendments would basically strip the entire bill and would make the bill just basically say that, you know, we support uh, to the maximum extent practical giving consideration and preference to natural surface materials, um, which really is what we do in practice now. Uh, and so from that perspective, then the bill doesn't need to be a bill. It's in current practice what we do here in Montgomery County. I'm not sure about the rest of the state. Some of them do uh, do that. And so um, realistically, from my perspective, the uh, most practical thing for us to do would be to oppose the bill. Um, the bill doesn't really exist without uh, the prohibition. And the prohibition is something that, again, would be incredibly problematic. Uh, not just from uh, the standpoint of creating new fields, but the other part that's incredibly troubling is about replacement and understanding that in some communities where we've made a commitment uh, and certainly have partnered with our community uh, who have raised their own funds uh, to help to do this, us stepping away from that commitment to our constituency isn't something that we want to do, nor do we want to support the state stepping away from their support 
of their constituency. And so from that perspective, uh, on uh, financial measures, uh, I would also oppose the bill. Okay, our council staff has recommended that we oppose the bill. Is there any objection to following that recommendation? Council member um, Jawando. Uh, I would, I think, uh, agree with council member Alvernaz's position of, or suggestion, secondary suggestion <laughs> of no position. Um, you know, I, respecting the board's uh, chiming in uh, I, to Councilmember Rice's point, I understand. I do think uh, fields are preferable, um, but not always practical. So, uh, but you know, I, I, I am uncomfortable with us opposing this. I would like to recommend that we have no position. Yeah, we can take a vote, Councilmember Glass. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I appreciate the perspectives and, and to Councilmember Rice's comment that this has been an ongoing discussion uh, for some of you and for some of us uh, have not been knee deep in it and the the point regarding uh, the board of education muddling the language uh, leaves me confused as to what actually this legislation of the proposed amendments would actually do and uh, i would second my colleague uh, jawando's comments to have no position on it okay council I move that we oppose the bill if someone hasn't already moved it. I think we need to be clear. I think we need to articulate a, a position here and let that be known because I, I really like the comments that I heard from Mr. Albernoz and Mr. Rice. You made a lot of very important points there. A lot of this also is about this unrelenting campaign that does not actually have a modest compromise as its goal. And I think we've got to be clear that there isn't a a, a good way to use this and there's a bad way and we favor the good way to use this and that's why we're sending a message. Okay, so there's been a motion by Councilmember Reamer that has been seconded by Councilmember Rice to um, oppose the bill, which is what the council staff recommended. All those in favor of opposition, please raise your hand. That's Councilmember Albernoz, Rice, Katz, Navarro, and Reamer. All those opposed? Is there opposition? Yes. Councilmember Glass, Jawando, and Friedson, so passes with opposition to the bill. Okay. The next piece of legislation um, basically codifies mm -hmm. a program in the state statute of a bikeways network program and allows for funding of the program so that there would be $7.7 .7 million um, when the program's ultimately phased in as far as the funding is concerned in fiscal year 25 um, to provide grants and also provide for the cost of administ administering the program. Also, interestingly, it's got a one provision on it that allows um, of those amounts um, $100,000 to be provided to counties and municipalities to help them actually apply for the grants. So county executive supports the piece of legislation. Okay. All right, any comments from my colleagues regarding this bill? Mm -hmm. Uh, council staff is recommending that we support this particular bill. Any opposition to that? Any objection to that? No. Okay, so we will uh, support it. Okay, the next piece of legislation, I think you're um, certainly the, 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 uh, the council before the four knew or familiar with it because you passed um, a program that also creates matches for this purpose. It's uh, the Small Business Innovation Research and Technology Transfer Incentive Program. Um, so we have, you know, technology companies that get federal, federal grants. Um, the county now has a program that matches those federal grants, and the state is now creating a program that looks um, almost identical to the program you created to provide state matches. Um, and the county executive supports this piece of legislation. All right. Any... Questions or comments from my colleagues? Looks like everybody's giving a thumbs up. So without objection, we will support this. Kathleen's got the next bill. Madam President, council members, um, so on to House Bill um, 983, SB 898, uh, dealing with officer-involved deaths. Um, this bill would require uh, any law enforcement agency to develop a written policy regarding how to handle officer-involved deaths. Um, that written policy must uh, require that investigations uh, of officer-involved deaths be performed by at least two independent investigators 
who are uh, uh, not employed by the law enforcement agency uh, for which the officer uh, who's involved in the death um, works. Um, the investigators must have experience conducting complex criminal investigations. Um, as soon as possible after completing uh, that investigation, the independent investigators must submit a report to the state's attorney. If the state's attorney decides that there is not sufficient cause to move forward with prosecution, uh, the state's attorney is required to release the final report, uh, but has the ability to redact what is called confidential information under the bill. Um, the bill specifically says that it does not prohibit uh, the normal kind of internal um, review of police conduct under the Law Enforcement Officers Bill of Rights. Um, uh, Chief Manger, right there. Chief Manger is here. Um, the other side. <laughs> and I'll just share with you um, the county executive's position and, and then uh, Chief Manger um, is the most important person here. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we did talk to the county executive this morning and because of concerns that the chief shared with the county executive, he is supporting the concepts in this bill but asking for amendments that deal with the infrastructure that's not available. Essentially this bill by requiring independent investigations, not by our own police department, requires that we somehow rely on other entities, that we be able to, well, we can find them. If they might not, we don't know if they'll be willing, we don't know if they'll have the expertise, um, and backwards and forwards throughout the state that everybody's gonna have that issue. And so um, Chief Major can speak to what he shared with the county executive, but it's essentially the amendments would be um, to support this concept, but, but to say it's not gonna work unless there's infrastructure available at the state level. Um, some kind of um, uh, a Maryland Bureau of Investigation that had appropriate staffing, training, forensic capability um, that all of the counties could rely on as an independent uh, source of investigation. So with that, I will defer to Chief Manger. Okay, Chief Manger. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, so I, Council Member Juwando and I have talked about this um, on a couple of occasions. And uh, the county executive and I are certainly on the same page with Council Member Juwando in terms of um, our, the, uh, the emphasis on uh, transparency and accountability. Um, I think ev everybody understands that. Um, th th they're just, with this bill, there's some operational issues that have not been addressed. And um, I, the, the, uh, the model that I think that uh, most of us are, look at, at um, at other places in this country are states that have State Bureau of Investigations. Uh, Georgia, uh, I think Tennessee, but I, I'll speak about Georgia because that's what I'm most familiar with. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is a state agency that handles all officer-involved shootings in the state of Georgia. And um, it, it works because they have the staffing, the resources, the expertise um, to do these kinds of very complicated, time-consuming investigations that need an immediate response. That you, um, and so um, it, th that model certainly works. And the, I think that if uh, the state ever decides to create a Maryland Bureau of Investigation, uh, which would be a state agency that would handle these things, um, that would be the model I think that all of us could, could get behind. Um, as it is now, um, this relies on um, the the hope that you that uh, uh, one law enforcement agency can create an agreement with another to handle these investigations, but you, you still there there are, are, are a host of operational issues which make this um, difficult at, at best. So uh, so the the, the um, I think the position that the county executive was taking is that he certainly supports the the intent, the transparency, the accountability, but that there needed to be amendments to address the operational issues. Thank you so much. Council Member Joanda. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And thank you all for being here. Uh, you might, this might sound familiar. It is the, the bill that we have all co-sponsored here at the county level, uh, almost identically with changes for state policy versus county. Uh, I should mention that the uh, House sponsor is Delegate Emma, Emily Shetty on Judici Judiciary, Montgomery County Delegate, and the Senate sponsor is Senator Jill Carter. Uh, who's on judicial proceedings and in, in from Baltimore and has been active on police accountability issues. Uh, and I, and I, they introduced these bills at my urging, just to make sure that's clear. 
I do, I, I agree, and I think there will be amendments coming. I'll be in Annapolis tomorrow testifying on behalf of the House bill, which was able to get in under the deadline. I think the Senate bill fell after. Um, that the ideal situation for the state would be that there is a state entity, uh, whether it's a Bureau of Investigation, as Chief Major mentioned, or a department within the Attorney General's office or the state police. There's different models that you could do, depending, Wisconsin has a model, Georgia has a model. Uh, that that would ideally be the best way to ensure independence, also competency of, of, of the investigators and the, make sure they have the tools they need, uh, and also the accountability and transparency. And I think the sponsors, not I think, I know the sponsors want to move in that direction. As you know, with Annapolis, things have to be thrown into the hopper very quick. We were butting up against deadlines. And so just to not have complication, these bills were put in almost identically to our bill, which we don't have the authority to mandate the, a state, the creation of a state entity or office that would do that, which is why the county bill doesn't have that. And we're going to do this, this partnering, hopefully, if we pass the bill after the public hearing tomorrow and the public safety committee a uh, few weeks after that. So I just think that context is important for my colleagues to know. And I would urge us to support this bill. Uh, we can certainly make a statement that it is preferable, and we would like to see the state move uh, to have some standardization and creation of an office. I, I am in support of that. And I think, again, there will be amendments coming that speak to that in Annapolis and when, the, when these bills are, are taken up. Thank you. Councilmember Rice. Thank you very much for that uh, explanation, Councilmember Juwando. I'm, 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 uh, you said it's, it's modeled after the bill that we have here locally, but I don't recall us requiring two investigators. We just said that it needed to be something that was investigated and in having a memorandum of understanding with another jurisdiction. This is actually slating that there's a particular number. Um, and one of the concerns that staff had said, and I know being involved in a situation of when you have an investigation for something that's as complex as something like this, um, it actually mm -hmm. isn't going to involve a large amount of staff. And so I'm very concerned that the amount of staff that we're actually allocating for something like this is less than what is needed. Um, this will have significant implications also on uh, the ability for them to actually uh, focus on crimes that are happening here or in whatever jurisdiction. So you're taking away resources from that other jurisdiction. And how does that work is kind of my, my, my only question because, um, you know, we have crimes here I'm just, if Howard asked us to be one of those, you know, we're, we need to focus on solving ours. And so I, I support what the chief is talking about in terms of a model that's a state entity that's created to do this and would fully support that. So are you saying that those are the amendments that you're looking at or somewhere in between? Or I, I just want to be explicit about what it is because if we're going to support with amendments, then I just want to be clear about what those are. Sure. Thank you, Councilman Rice. So, yes, to your second question, there will be an amendment to create a state agency to do this. However, I still think it's important. One of the models that could you could theoretically do is you could have everyone contribute, uh, police agencies contribute to a, an office that was created, and, and then you, if there was a sharing like our model under the county bill. And, and just to answer your question, there are the bill here in the county does say two investigators as well, uh, it, 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 two independent investigators, it, it is, my, is my understanding. And, um, and so, so to, to your point, yes, I agree a statewide entity that coordinates this and standardizes for the whole state is the goal. Yes, that amendment will be introduced. Um, but I still would say, even if it were in this form, the, the importance of the independence of the investigation and the transparency and accountability would still be uh, important, even if we had to do the statewide matching. But I don't think that's where we're heading. I, I agree that's not ideal. Uh, and as you know, in Annapolis, these things a lot of times are introduced. You and Councilmember Hucker have been there. I think it was served time, to, the pun and not intended. The, uh, they get introduced and then they flush it out over years. And so I think we're probably heading that place in this bill, but we'll see. And, and, and the only reason why I ask that is because what, what I do know happens oftentimes in Annapolis, if they can shift costs from 
the state to right. the locals, they'll be more than happy to do that. And so I think we need to be very explicit about what it is that we'd like to see in terms of financial responsibility, because I know, I, I hear it all the time, as I'm sure that you do, uh, how folks would like to have additional officers and resources in the community. I just was at uh, South Lake with uh, Councilmember Albernos and uh, Councilmember Reamer, uh, in which we heard about security and crime being an issue and then wanting to have additional officers and all kinds of things. And so I'm, I'm very in tune to those as well. So to be able to ensure that we can protect our budgetary and fiscal uh, needs when it comes to supporting our officers, but have an investigation like this into transparency, I couldn't agree more that those kinds of things are important, but I do feel very strongly that, again, uh, the onus from a financial and fiduciary perspective needs to be on the state when it comes to providing the staffing to do these kinds of investigations, very much like the model that the chief had described that happens in Georgia. I think that if the bill were crafted in that sort of a way, I would wholeheartedly support it. Thank you. Councilman Katz. Thank you very much, Madam President. I, I would suggest at this point that we take no position on it. The, I, I agree with the, with the uh, county executive's position. I believe, I certainly um, uh, in, in, in improve the, the uh, idea for the transparency and everything else. But if the recommendations, if the, the um, amendments do not take place, then this is, this is bad legislation. And I'm concerned that, that uh, unless we can guarantee that the amendment take place, that we should take no position because this, if, if we, the, the reality of these things is that if you had a state agency, that's fine. You'd have people who were, who were uh, experienced and, and, and uh, can, can handle these types of investigations. If we start doing that, you know, you would have one from each agency there and whatnot, that becomes a huge problem. The, the amount of time that it takes to investigate becomes a huge problem. We want these types of things to be solved as quickly as possible, and you want it to be solved correctly. You want someone to investigate it with, with, uh, who has the experience to do it. And I'm concerned that if you start doing, you know, people uh, that aren't experienced and you have various agencies across the state, I I'm concerned about that. So my suggestion is that we take no position on this. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Reamer. <clears throat> Thanks. I wanted to just ask a question. Uh, might direct this to council staff, but uh, Mr. Juando may know the answer. Does state police do homicide investigations? Um, or, actually, Chief Major, thank you. <laughs> why, why wouldn't I ask the actual law enforcement officer? <laughs> there are, uh, there are uh, areas in the state where local police do not do the homicide investigations because the state police do them. Montgomery County is not one of those jurisdictions. Um, I've had a conversation with the superintendent of state police and they uh, uh, do not have the resources to do ours, nor would they do our. Uh, no, there would need to be some funding to support them to provide that function if they were to be asked to do that, right? Uh, at that the would state be at level. Least, at least, um, yes. I I'm just pointing to a possibility, which is this idea of state police doing these investigations as a way to fulfill the, the mission of the bill. It's, it does seem like a hearing that they do homicide investigations for jurisdictions. They clearly have officers who are homicide yes, investigators. They, yes, they are, and they do. Um, I can tell you from my conversations with the state police that they would, uh, they would ask for, uh, and they would tell you they need additional resources to right. pick up this kind of response. Fair enough, absolutely. No, no question about that. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we would want for it to be well staffed. Otherwise, who's going to do the investigation? And we got a big problem. So, but uh, it does seem like there, that's, that's one practical solution. There may be others, I don't know. But just to observe that there is a, if the bill's supporters in Annapolis are able to work this through and find a way forward, this, that's one path forward. There could be others, uh, but it, you know, None of that, really what I'm trying to say is it doesn't seem like there's any particular problem with the bill. It clearly needs more work, but it's, it's uh, I think for us, what we want to do is send a signal of support so that the sponsors know that they have people behind them and that helps them with their negotiations as they work their way through. And, and you know, presumably this will be, they'll, they'll figure out the answer to the very fair questions that have been raised about it. All right, Councilmember Jawanda, and then I'll chime in. Just wrapping up, thank you for your uh, coming back to me a third time. 
the I would agree with Councilmember Remar and, and just to Councilmember Katz's point, I think if we can say, which is similar, it seems similar to the county executive's position, we're in favor of the independent, the principle of independent investigations and transparency with reporting, uh, but that we think it should be with a state entity. Uh, I would, I think that's a f the signal we should send, and, and that again gives the room and support to the delegate and the senator to do their negotiating. Right. I mean, I think that's what I would be, um, and I want to make sure. Is there any objection to uh, sending the message that we supported, but just uh, similarly to yes, what County clear. Executive has said, yeah. that we supported with these amendments, most specifically this issue that it should be, you know, an independent entity at the state level, um, a la Georgia, et cetera. With additional um, funding. With what? With additional, additional funding. Resources. With additional money that doesn't come from us. Okay. Funded. Funded. <laughs> we like funded mandates. Thank you so much, Chief. Really appreciate you being here. All right, so that would be our position as well. Okay. Moving on? Yep. Next yes. Bill? Okay. Um, so moving on to uh, Senate Bill 917 HB 1045. Um, this is a bill that deals, <clears throat> excuse me, deals with the requirements for uh, master, for comprehensive plans or general plans in our county. We call it a general plan. But it requires that, um, that a county's general plan include a housing element. Uh, in addition to the elements that must be there already under state law. And um, in addition, it says that that housing element must include um, how the, a, a, a strategy for addressing affordable housing and for addressing the impacts of gentrification. So the county executive supports this bill. Montgomery County, as you well know, has a housing element in its general plan. Um, and um, there were some concerns raised by council staff and also MAKO staff about the language regarding impacts of gentrification, in particular, what did that mean? Because um, it, it is possible to litigate whether a county is in compliance with state law when it comes to their comprehensive plan or general plan. So there was concern about uh, language. Uh, the county executive did not share that concern um, and supports the bill uh, as drafted. Thank you. Councilmember Rice. Well, thank you, uh, Madam President. And um, I was uh, at MACO when we took this bill up and uh, supported opposing the bill. Um, our job is to ensure that uh, affordable housing principles are there. Not only that, but under your leadership, Madam President, we are looking at analyzing that with an equity lens as well. Um, local authority is incredibly important in these scenarios. And so um, while we see gentrification happening uh, in areas surrounding uh, Montgomery County, um, we see exactly the opposite. We see folks that are actually moving into uh, a lot of areas that uh, were traditionally uh, non-people of color. Uh, and that is a tremendous testament to the commitment that we have had here on this council when it comes to making sure that we can uh, make our uh, communities welcoming throughout Montgomery County. And so from that perspective, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I understand uh, the intent. I'm not sure I do, but I guess I understand the intent of the bill. Um, but uh, from our perspective as a local jurisdiction, um, we certainly, I think, do a very good job of this. And so uh, something like this bill is not needed. I concur with the comments from Mr. Rice. Glad you're on that committee. So you were versed on this one before we got it. You know, this seems like a pretty significant intrusion into our housing policy arena. And it's disappointing the county executive supports it. Um, you know, this is, this is, I think this thing's coming out of nowhere, but uh, I don't think we should support it. I think we've been, we've been pretty consistent on this council, at least since I've been here on opposing any kind of uh, state um, efforts to really intervene in any land use element uh, or any decision that has to do with that at a solely yep. uh, uh, purview. And obviously, we all have these goals in mind. We're working very hard, but uh, I think we've been pretty consistent uh, with, with that position. Councilmember Jawando. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I would share some of the goals and concerns of the bill and reducing gentrification and including. Uh, that in the plan, and, and again, you have to define what that means, and requiring uh, affordable housing. Those are things that I, we just had a long discussion in Fed about 
uh, and we'll have more about those goals. So I just want to stay in favor of that, but we should make those decisions here. So, so I would agree with my colleagues that we should oppose. Okay, so I think without objection, we will oppose the bill uh, for those reasons that have been stated. Okay, is that it? Are we done? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.